the guy who said I pr that he proves it's cheating, I want to know who it is. Like, I want to know which GM said that. Now, I think a lot of a lot of them were under. I feel like a lot of them were under the impression that I played Bishop C8. I'm pr I'm positive of that. I did not play it. I played the move that they all said, which was H6. I mentioned it. So let's be totally clear on what this charge is. The charge is, I mentioned as a, a candidate move in a quiet position two years ago on a stream. It played the most natural move. And that proves, that is the, that is the smoking gun that I committed the crime of thought crime, literally thought crime two years ago in one position, a move that happened for a completely unrelated reason to be the number two move of Lila, which I have never downloaded in my life. Are you f like, this makes me furious. This is unacceptable. So it literally, I literally explain my logic too. I said, I was, I, first thing I noticed is after E3, his bishop looked like it could, could, could get, could get trapped. So I needed to control the E5 square. That's what I noticed in two seconds. How do you control the E5 square? There's a rook on E8. There's a bishop blocking it. I thought about moving it back. It's the most natural square. I could find a million examples of this, probably in his games too. Um, so... But the amount of people buying the bishop c8 argument, like, is is just it's scary. It's it's terrifying actually that any GM believes this. Any GM on the planet is is buying the bishop c8 thing is absolutely terrifying. That Nepo is buying it is terrifying, and because it shows you that even in a game where literally skill is above all above everything, you can you can insert a twisted delusion and people will actually like buy it. Eric said it came to... You don't need an Eric Hansen to say it came to his mind. Even if it came to nobody's mind, it would still, like, not be anything resembling weighty evidence. But of course, if you ask a million 2600s, you won't find a single one who said it's not at least a candidate move, which it was. Now, I think the majority of people wouldn't... I think playing it would be... I would want to know, like, what swayed that person to make the move. I would... You know, it would be nice to know that, but it, of course, would still be crazy to call that evidence of any kind to mention it. Yes, it's mental. So anyway, so you got to focus. And that's the tip, just the tip of the iceberg. You know, it's the tip of the iceberg. And all of this is delivered with so much just so much contempt for everything I say. Every time I open my mouth, it's what, what I say is not acceptable. It's too complicated. Or it's too simple or there's not enough lines. What did I ever do? What did I do to you? Other than treat you with respect, as I still do. Um, you know, as I still do. And, and try to, like, depersonalize it. Even though it's hard. <sighs> Come on, dude. And, and the, 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 the whole, like, don't be a victim mentality. I'm just asking for, like, you know, for reasonable reasonable uh, measures to be taken with players who's who have an anomaly well why didn't you start with that then why didn't you start by saying listen daniel with full due respect to you um i'm uneasy given this this and this it's not an accusation nothing personal but could i kindly request you to play with a second camera um whenever possible i would immediately install a second camera with no questions asked no questions asked the same day i would have streamed to the second camera um, third, 800 cameras, if, if you'd like. Was it delivered in that way? No. Okay. So is that truly what you want then? I don't think so. Am I saying anything like crazy right now? Am I, am I being a, you know, as for the charges themselves, yes, they will be properly responded to in, in, in good time. Trust me, I'm not leaving anything alone here. But just if you take the bird's eye view and you put yourself in my shoes, like hopefully I spelled out how I think.
Okay, here we go. Dylan, I am just like ideologically opposed to putting this out myself because I'm not interested in making my channel about this at all. Um, here is the position. Okay, not the position. Here we go. Wait a second. We're not even at the moment. So here white plays e3. I was expecting bishop e3, um, which I thought was annoying, which apparently was not an acceptable word to use because I was annoyed by this idea bishop e6 and pawn is weak, etc. So he plays e3. And I can't put, I don't know what people want me to do. Like, I can't put into words my intuition. Of course, I'm like, I'm I'm filling in the subconscious gaps. But yeah, I'm telling you like what, this is four seconds. Like I spent, I spent 14 seconds on h6. I, if I'm tr to trust the chess.com timestamp and like maybe three of, or four of them were considered, were, were spent on considering bishop c8. Um, the immediate reaction, I see the movie three. And I think trapped bishop. Okay, stop me if I'm saying anything you would find unreasonable. Trap bishop. So, trap bishop, why? Because it, you've cut off the escape. So immediately I think h6, bishop f4, and I'm my brain is like on this trap the bishop tactic. So I have bishop takes c3, a tempo move, and then I see g5. This is all happening in three seconds, mind you. Why does bishop e5 check? That's it. Cover the e5 square. I like creative cool moves, bishop c8. As a byproduct, and this is something I can't, I cannot seem to communicate to people, it's a pretty static position. So this doesn't harm black's position. You're kind of opening up your control of center squares, and you're like, well, the center's closed. This doesn't make sense. Of course it does make sense. Why could play f3 later? In static positions, not every move has an exact, like, oh, you made this move for this reason. It could just be like a move that doesn't harm your position. Defense b7, um, and bishop f4 now, does not hit the bishop on e5. You have the the leeway now to, to make another improving move and play h6 on the next move. Now, again, I did not play this move because on my fifth second, I realized that after h6, um, sorry, after bishop c8, um, even if I do this, then this is crazy because white has like a million other escape squares. And you're like, how could a GM not see this? I'm slowing this down. This took me three seconds to figure out. And that's it. Once I discovered this, I considered some other moves that I wasn't airing out loud. But when I say a move is interesting, I do it for the sake of the chat. I'm, when possible, trying to like throw stuff out so people can at least partially track my thought process. Maybe it'll help people. During Title Tuesday, I talk a lot less. Um, but even if I did not say in the sentence prior, maybe I can trap the bishop, which I said, this would still be a normal move. I could run a maneuver search right now, and I could probably find you some instances of bishop c8 played in similar positions. Like, Nakesons mentioned that it's a typical idea in the Dutch. So, I mean, I could do this right now, actually. Although, it might take some tweaking. Sorry, it, it, this does not impact anything. Um, but basically... What do all like normal players go play as queen h3? Um, I think that's most GM's intuition. That's what most people would play. Um, one sec, let me pull up a chat here. So queen h3 check is uh, doesn't work for the following reason. So if king f2, then queen g3 is mate. So the king has to go back to g1. Now you give this other check on e3 again. Uh, king g2, queen g3 is mate, so white has to block. And here there's a cool tactic that is findable in a blitz game. Here you can play this cool move f3. Um, now it looks confusing, but in fact it's not all that crazy. White has three captures here, right? So if you take the queen, black is currently down a rook, by the way. Notice that. Um, you get to this position, and here black has, let's think, black is, should be winning here. Don't quote me on this. I think bishop f4 here is winning. But but even, even taking and like taking is a lot of pawns for the exchange and black is super active. So this is bad for white. Um, so white has to play bishop takes f3. Right? Because if white, um, black is down a rook. If black, uh, white takes with the knight, then rook takes h1 is obviously winning. White loses the queen or the other rook. So you have to take with the bishop. Now black takes with the knight. Again, the knight cannot be captured because of rook takes h1, so the king has to move up. We're getting to the point. You trade queens. You 
pick up the knight on h2, and it looks like black is winning because you have two minor pieces and a pawn for the rook. Who can spot like the caveat? What does white have in this final position that makes it makes it bad? Oh, I have the analysis, yeah. Yeah, white can play this move king g3, and the knight is trapped. Now black can play a tactical move, rook h6. You can't take the knight here because of this deflection. But white goes rook a to g1, and then rook to g2, and basically picks up the knight. So this is informative, because the correct first move can only be found if you have calculated this line, understood why it doesn't work, and then reverse engineered the fact that h5 is the only winning move. Why? Because after, let's say, rook to d1, which is why it's most, most natural response, you go down the same line, and at the end, identical. So here, by the way, yeah, so this is still winning, of course. So remember that bishop f3 is the testing move. And now, okay, here, like, you can... Like, it's funny because if you do this, then king g3 is still bad for black. But here, the winning idea is you start with rook takes h2. And at the very end of this line, were the pawn on h7 and the white rook on a1, white would have king g3 trapping the knight. Now king g3 is met with knight g4, and the knight gets out. That's... Um, I did give it to Hans, and yeah, it's impossible. Um, it, it, like, nobody could solve this. Maybe a GM, like, knowing that this is supposed to be, like, impossible... Can people discern a slight difference here? Is Does this look... So I guess to the people leaving comments that bishop c8 is all I needed to see, you would put this in the same category. It's like about as difficult as h5. Or as unbelievable to come up with this naturally. I guess so. But then I... Clearly we're talking about a different game here. Um, we're, and we're speaking a different language entirely. Um, I, did, I have shown it before on stream. Um... This is what I mean. This is what an actual engine move looks like. If I said h5 is interesting and either I rattled off this line or I like couldn't provide an explanation, it would be strange. If I said, oh, I want to put the knight on g4, I would be more understanding, although I would be surprised at anybody who doesn't like give a check here who's a GM because the intuition is so strong to do this. It still is not like evidence but it's something that I would like pay attention to and might, you know, it might make me more suspicious is not even the right word. Like look more carefully at like the other games. And if there were more moments like this, then, you know, a case could be made um, for this person getting investigated very carefully. Okay, if you find examples of this sort, you can uh, confront me with them. Absolutely, I'll, I'll answer to each and every one. I'm sorry, but Bishop C8 is not one of them.